This is the Cobra Mark III. And if you didn't know any better, you could be excused for thinking it's just an overweight Sidewinder. But it isn't. Take a second look, and you'll notice the better choices have been made. The body panels are sleeker. The heat vents are more sensibly placed behind the cockpit. There's two more medium hard points, one more size 2 internal slot, and three more class 4 slots. It's got double the shields, double the armor, and at 346,000 credits, it's six times more expensive. So then, is it six times better than the Sidewinder? Oh hell yeah. Now the Mark III has been in production for about 200 years, which is pretty good. And much like any other ship that's any good, it's built and sold by Falcon de Lacy, but designed by someone who actually knew what they were doing. When Falcon de Lacy buys your company so they can ruin your design, that's how you know a ship is good. The Mark III is classified as a multi-purpose ship, which means that it's suitable for exploration, combat, and trading. And it is. In the same way that Obsidian Ant can make you a three-course dinner, he could do that, but it's not something you'd regularly ask him to do. As a trade ship, we'd have to compare it to the Hauler or the Adder, and it can hold more cargo than both of those ships combined. But without a Guardian module, it has significantly less jump range than either of them. With it, it has less cargo space. And it's the same problem with exploration. For just a bit more, you can get a Diamondback Scout. So, what's left? It's not hard to find something to shoot at with a Cobra. And it's definitely not hard to punch above your weight class. With a little help, of course. It's not a bad way of making some quick credits, either. Hunting in this kind of pack formation means you can take down almost anything. Strafing targets becomes an art form. Balancing how long you can lean in with the guns and how fast you can get out of there before they get a lock on you. But there's a problem. This. The Mark III Viper. A ship specifically built for this kind of pack combat. It's faster in a straight line, it has the same hard points, and it costs less than half of the Cobra. And it gets worse. Fitting the Cobra with all the high-end bells and whistles is going to cost about 7 million credits. You could do the same thing in the Viper for two. So it can be hard to place what the Cobra 3 is for. And its shields seem to be non-existent. Even with a class 4 A-rated shield, there will be times where you are legitimately surprised how quickly your canopy will be cracked open. At times it seems the entire ship is only held together by unicorn dreams and pixie dust. The only thing it seems to do best is helping you make enough credits to go fly something else. And I can prove it. What you see here is a brand new stock Cobra Mark III. I haven't changed a single thing aside from removing the cargo racks and moving the pulse lasers to the class 2 slots. And I did that because the class 1 slots on either side of the ship are just ridiculously hard to focus fire with. But selling the cargo racks freed up 18,000 credits, so I'm already ahead. A quick trip over to the nav beacon, and like I said, it's not hard to find something to shoot at in a Cobra. That's one, two, three. That's four. I'm not sure I could have done any of this in an E rated Viper. This was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Seven. And pop. That's eight. Now, if I wanted to, I could fly right back into the station, claim these bounties, trade in the ship, and move right on up the ladder. It took me all of 20 minutes at a nav beacon to buy my way out of the ship. There's really no reason then not to go pick up one of the objectively better ones. But I don't want to. I really don't care that the DBS has higher jump range, or the Viper has a smaller hit profile. I'd rather do it in this. When I took out my own Cobra for this review, I already had all the best toys on it. And it performed well enough. I even managed to take down an Anaconda with it. But it all seemed so fragile. Even the smallest mistake, and its shields were gone. It wasn't until I took out the base model E-rated Cobra that I really gained any appreciation for what exactly had happened. There's a reason this ship costs twice as much as the Viper, and 7 million to outfit it. Because it can. The real question isn't what is this ship good for, it's who it's good for. 
Chances are the Cobra is going to be your first real ship. Everything you've flown up until this point has been pretty simple. A pulse laser to shoot other ships with, a mining laser to shoot at rocks. But the Cobra opens up a world of possibilities. So you end up building this ship out piece by piece, collecting one more bounty to afford the power plant you need, compromising on weapons until you can afford what you actually want. The Cobra might very well be the only time any of us are forced to use grade B parts. You're not just spending credits to buy the best version of the ship in the garage. You're earning each module as you go. It really is jaw-dropping to experience the transformation from what this ship is to what it could be, because it is definitively yours. The Mark III Cobra is a great ship, and it is great because it doesn't do anything particularly well. Is the Cobra the best ship for anything? No. But you should buy it anyway.